LaSalle and Windsor, causing only minor injuries, but plenty of damage. One of the worst hit homes was on Victory Road in LaSalle. Earlier today, I went down there and met Crystal Belanger, who showed me some of the destruction the tornado left behind. So over here, you can see that the gentlemen here, who, by the way, have been very great with us, uh, they're right inside. When they got here this morning, they said, where's the lumber? The lumber's been blown away. The front porch, we have the railings completely gone. Um, over here, you can see the broken glass of the carport door. It shattered it when the wind came through. Uh, the pickup, the whole back end of it is destroyed. We can go back there and I can show you that as well if you'd like. Uh, but all the railings are gone off the porch. Uh, all the eaves, troughs, sockets are gone. Uh, they've already removed the, the railings, but there was all black railings right down to the Christmas tree lights were still on there. It's been uh, quite difficult. So if you see here, this is the this is the job these young men have to deal with. All of the trusses are broken. Um, and it's not safe for us to be in the home, so they've let us know just grab a couple things that we need and get out um, because obviously it's not safe for them to even be standing in there, I wouldn't imagine. Careful of the glass. And then, as you can see, it broke the windows clear out. And the back of the truck, it ripped off. As you can see here, it ripped it right off. Um, so we've been having a bit of a trying time. Now, residents aren't the only ones reeling from last night's storm. Some local businesses have also been hit hard. Laura Silva joins us live from Island View Marina in LaSalle. Laura? Although the marina owner, Kim Gemi, was sitting in his boat right behind me when a tree branch fell out of the sky, smashed his windshield, he then watched the tornado rip right through the water behind me here. He says it, it came out of nowhere. Uh, his first thoughts were to find safety, but then they quickly drifted to how this would all affect his business. There are currently 70 dock boats trapped in the marina because of downed trees. Boat owners have been filtering in all day to assess damages. Gammy has been working tirelessly with his staff to remove the debris. Well, it's a lot of cleanup, but uh, I'm sure it's going to affect store sales because uh, I can't be up there. i got to be back there cleaning everything up, so it'll probably be about a week or two. Minutes later, a second possible tornado through tore through the Greenwood Center Industrial Park. That's where Windsor and Disposal Services keep their trucks. Workers were unable to access them this morning. That means no garbage pickup for residents and no work for employees. There's some pretty good money. That's for sure. The, the two job sites we have require WDS to be open and you know we don't have contracts for other places to dump any more stuff. So pretty much where I work for at least 10 employees today. A piece of sheet metal flew through the sky and landed on fitness instructor Ben Graham's car while he was at work last night. His gym has been closed after water seeped through the roof and caused damage to the walls and floor. He says he'll be out of work for at least a few days. He says he was spooked by the storm that rattled the area. We felt it, you know, the, the roof was shaking, the, the windows were shaking. Uh, we had a lot of water coming in through the roof and so it was very it was sensory overload, if you will. The storm has left some people out of work, but the same does not go for cleanup crews. They've been working tirelessly over the night, and they still have a lot more work to do. Inspectors are still assessing the damages done to these local businesses, and they say it's too soon to know the financial hit they've had to take. They're hoping to find out when they'll be able to reopen in the coming days. Otto? Thanks, Laura. Now let's bring in CBC meteorologist Jay Scotland. Jay, a lot of people we spoke to today said the tornado caught them off guard. How does a tornado come out of nowhere? Well, we were looking at the ingredients in place, certainly for strong thunderstorms yesterday. We had a very humid, very soupy air mass in place. It was 27 degrees when you and I were talking. Felt 37 with the humidex. That humidity is the fuel for strong thunderstorms. We also had some wind shear in place, which is a change in wind speed or a change in wind direction as we head up higher in the atmosphere. And that's what can get tornadoes or thunderstorms, sorry, rotating and allowing them to spawn a tornado. What we were lacking 
at least in the forecast models, was a trigger to really fire up those storms. And we did see a few thunderstorms. Well, you and I were chatting yesterday before getting into the forecast, uh, firing up over eastern Michigan. Well, there was indeed enough of a trigger that the forecast models were not really picking up on, and that sparked off a very strong thunderstorm that actually spawned what was a water spout. So a tornado over water over the Detroit River moved on shore. You can see this is the track of yesterday's storm uh, in the LaSalle area, causing a lot of damage. May have been one, may have been two tornadoes that either weakened and then reformed towards Windsor or tracked towards Windsor. You can see that track of this strong thunderstorm, and that is why we saw such wide damage both in the LaSalle area as well as in Windsor from that very strong thunderstorm that did indeed spawn a tornado. Real quickly, I just want to show you that we are under a severe thunderstorm watch for right now, for tonight. But the good news, all of the activity, the warnings are well to our east. We are looking at conditions actually clearing a little later this evening. Much quieter weather picture ahead later this evening, overnight tonight, and again tomorrow. Jay, there's another storm on the way. We'll come back to you later in the show to talk about that. Now, we want to recap what we know so far. Environment Canada is confirming that two separate tornadoes touched down last night. The first tornado reached speeds up to 145 kilometers per hour. The second one was even stronger, up to 210 kilometers per hour. Four people were injured and three of them were treated in hospital. None of the injuries are serious. Mayor Drew Dilkins says about 15 homes were damaged in the storm. Now that awesome power of the tornado was caught on camera by many people in the area. Kevin Ross of LaSalle filmed what appears to be the forming of the funnel cloud from his back deck. Trailer, trailer, baby, trailer. Ross believes this tornado was the second one that formed. This video shows the pure power of the storm from inside an office building. It appears to be very close to the center of the storm. You can see all that debris being swept up. The people filming eventually moved away from the wind for their own safety. Wow. And this video was, ca was captured by Sean Mayhew. He was in his car when the storm hit. He pulled over to capture this from the side of the road, but when the tornado got too close, he did the smart thing, put his phone down, and kept driving. We have received hundreds of social media comments from you guys over the past 24 hours, and it seems a lot of people are wondering why there was no warning. The CBC's Meg Roberts is looking into that angle, and she joins us now live. Meg, what have you learned? Otto, it seemed like one second it was raining hard and the next there's a tornado ripping through LaSalle and Windsor. Obviously, there are questions as to why we weren't warned sooner. Environment Canada sent a damage assessment team to Windsor, Essex County. The team's severe weather meteorologist says it might be one of the strongest tornadoes Ontario has seen in the past five years. He says this tornado developed so quickly it probably wasn't picked up on the radar. Storm did develop very quickly. Um, another factor in detection was that there wasn't a lot of lightning when the storm was developing. And when the uh, first radar scan came in, uh, it's very likely that the tornado may have already been on the ground. And so that was why maybe the uh, warning came out a little bit delayed. So Meg, what are city officials saying about all of this? Andrew Dilkins acknowledges it's hard to warn people when something like this happens so quickly, but the city does need to take some kind of action and should be looking at some kind of procedures. It's, uh, it's right for us to have the conversation and figure out if there is a system that we can, uh, we can employ that would uh, allow us to give advance warning, and maybe not just for weather events, but for other events that are happening in the city uh, that, that residents need to know about. Windsor Fire Department says they're already looking at a mass notification system that will allow residents to register their cell phone or home phone numbers to get updates. That was a plan that was brought to council last year and didn't pass. They're hoping it will this year. Otto. Thanks, Meg. Like we said, many of you had a lot to say about the tornado on our CBC Windsor Facebook page. Let's take a look at some of your comments. Camillo says they should always send out warnings, even if nothing happens, better to be safe sorry. Amy writes, give us back the sirens. It's clearly needed. Cry wolf all you want. At least we would have taken cover just in case. Sharon takes a sarcastic tone. I love this. Tornado we hear about after the fact, but if snow is coming, we get a three-day warning. 
Dan Sharon, Sharon echoes what many people are saying, calling it simply an epic fail. Elective surgeries remain canceled at Windsor Regional Hospital.